Nissan's Godzilla gets banned again? Just recently, the Nissan R32 Skyline was once again possibly getting banned in the racing circuit. Yes guys, the classic JDM legend car has made headlines all over the car enthusiast space when it is under investigation and possibly banned at the Bathurst 12-hour endurance race in Australia. Interestingly, the R32 Skyline which made the rounds on social media was not even a GTR. It was a rear-wheel drive R32 GTST. Yes, a GTST. I guess this event has reinforced why the Skylines were top dogs. In the reputation of this Japanese monster which is capable of destroying the competition and even rewriting the laws of racing. In this video, we talk about how the R32 GTR Skyline is such an icon and why it made the rounds on the internet all over again. The making of a monster. On the early 1980s, Nissan somehow was on the brink of a downturn. Slow sales on their current car lineup, no proper Halo sports car available, and the racing teams were unable to defend winning titles. Yes, there was the R31 Skyline GTSR, which on its golden age competed on a Group A touring car races. It did alright, winning on some of its races, but it was never a GTR, nor it was a proper Halo car. It never made a huge impact on the car enthusiast scene. It was just another sports coupe. Knowing this weak point, Nissan decided to rework its goals and thus the 901 movement was born. It was Nissan's effort to become Japan's premier automaker of performance cars, which in turn would reverse their company's dwindling sales and reputation by that time. One of Nissan's recognizable product of that movement was the R32 GTR Skyline. The R32 was designed under the regulations of Group A class racing. In short, it was a race car posing to be a sports car on the road. Apart from its turbocharged engine, it came with a unique four-wheel drive system called the Advanced Total Traction Engineering System for All Terrain, or simply known as the Atessa ETS. This was the one of the reasons why the R32 is a monster. This is in itself was underrated. The Atessa ETS was an intelligent and a huge advancement of any four-wheel drive system by that time. It worked as an adaptive four-wheel drive system as the front wheels would only engage during sudden acceleration and are losing traction on the rear wheels. Dominating on the racetrack. When Nissan released the R32 GTR Skyline, it was then set out on what it was supposed to do to compete and win on the Japanese Touring Car Championship Series, or JTCC. It did not only win races, it also changed the norm on that race series for all the racing team that competed. It got to the point that if your team was not running an R32 GTR Skyline as their main race car, then the fate of your team was destined to lose. Loosely, the Japanese Touring Car Championship was called as an all R32 GTR Touring Car Championship at that time. Talking about the races it won, the R32 GTR Skyline took 29 wins from 29 starts of the Japanese Touring Car Championship. Another underrated record the R32 GTR Skyline gained was breaking the Nordschleife production car record. The Nordschleife production car record at the time of development of the R32 GTR Skyline was 8 minutes and 45 seconds set by a Porsche 944. The Nissan test driver Hiroyoshi Kato smashed this record and brought it down to 8 minutes and 20 seconds. That's down by 25 seconds. That's a long time in the racing scene. While we are on the topic of time, if you're enjoying this content, we'd like you to hit that subscribe button so you won't miss out on upcoming videos. It'll only take one second. Anyway, let's go back to Godzilla. Changing the race rules. The R32 GTR Skyline did not only compete in Japan when it was released, it raced all over the world. And one of those races the R32 GTR Skyline joined was the Australian Touring Car Championship or ATCC. Well before the R32 Skyline, Nissan sports cars were already participating on the ATCC. The R30 and R31 GTSR Skylines did okay and managed to win some races. But they were easily outpaced by stronger competition like the Ford Sierra Cosworth RS500, 
BMW E30 M3 and the notable Holden Commodores. When the R32 GTR Skyline was introduced to the ATCC, it was initially plagued with faults and even had parts break prematurely. However, when the Australians honed and addressed the faults of the R32 GTR Skyline, then the R32's winning spree started. It was at this time the Australians started calling it Godzilla. A monster from Japan that destroyed anything on its path. It was relentless. Australian racing officials have become bored of seeing R32 GTR Skylines winning every time. Australian Motor Racing Yearbook even noted that in touring car racing at least, four-wheel drive has been so successful that it has almost rendered traditional rear-wheel drive obsolete. It was that notable. So obviously, the officials started to impose handicaps on the R32 GTR Skyline so that the other teams will have a winning chance. They were adding more weight onto the car and limited the boost levels of the turbo. The car initially weighed around 1,325 kilos or 2,921 pounds when it started racing on the ATCC. And after it was retired, the car was already about 1,500 kilos or 3,307 pounds. Even with the additional weight handicap, the R32 GTR Skyline still won. In 1993, the Australian racing officials have decided to radically change the racing rules, which brought Godzilla's dominance to a halt. And with these changes, the R32 GTR Skyline was forced to retire from the ATCC. History making a comeback. Over a couple weekends ago, the Bathurst 12-hour endurance race was held yet again at Mount Panorama. An R32 Skyline raced in the combined sedan's support category. In that category, it had space frame chassis and V8 touring classes and expected to have Chevrolet Camaros in Corvettes and late model Commodores. Initially, the R32 Skyline was listed as a GTR, but in reality, it was actually a GTST. And for anyone who don't know the difference of an R32 GTST and an R32 GTR Skyline, the GTST is limited to a rear wheel drive instead of the GTR's fame all wheel drive. The GTST also had a smaller single turbo inline 6 versus the GTR's bigger twin turbo unit. In short, it was the R32 GTR Skyline's little sister. During the race, the little old R32 Skyline clocked in 327 kilometers per hour or 203 miles per hour. Most GT3 cars hit around 280 kilometers per hour or 174 miles per hour on the same straight. The R32 Skyline was so fast that it prompted Motorsport Australia, the governing body behind the race, to open an official investigation into how much a floor pan car, a race car built on a road car's chassis, can make safely. It was not purely about the speed that caused the R32 Skyline to be investigated by the Motorsport Australia. When the R32 came up through a right-hand turn, the driver crashed into the wall and damaging the car and then forced the driver to retire from the race. That crash alongside the possible record-breaking speeds were grounds enough for Motorsport Australia to launch an investigation. This, once again, would likely change the regulations and limit the power of floor pan cars. Do you agree with racing governing bodies possibly banning the Nissan Skyline on the circuit? We think this is clearly unnecessary and just shows why Nissan's Godzilla is to be feared of. Speaking of Nissan, do you know that we are getting another refresh of the Nissan GTR? Yes, it's another refresh. We've made a video about the 2024 GTR changes. Click this one right here and we'll see you guys over there.